Hey, deserving listeners, 90 Day Fiance, The Single Life. Let's see what happens. Let's see what comes out of my face. Sir, and I'm grateful to Mike. I'm telling you, I'm grateful to him a lot. And I'm sorry. I'm good with him helping your mom because Michael is such a kind-hearted Michael, yes. man. But you, t- you took advantage of all of his kind-heartedness when it came to you. You played with somebody else's heart, somebody else's emotion. Uh, yeah. So you would hope that Mike would step in and go, Mom, like, take it easy. <laughs> you don't have to attack her in this way. So, because what is Natalie supposed to say in this moment? You're right, I'm a psychopathic scammer. I've been a con artist my whole life, and I've been conning him this whole time. I didn't care about him, I didn't fall in love with him, and everything was my fault. You're right, I mean, what is she supposed to say to this? And then the minute you felt like you could run off, you did. I want you to know that I was honest to Michael, and I came with right feelings. But the hell we went through with Michael, and what we experienced because of COVID, work, didn't want anymore, destroy myself. So I step away. I believe whatever she's telling me is not really the truth. Really? Wow, that's a that's a surprise. You think she's lying? Hmm. Didn't see that coming. <laughs> I'm being sarcastic. I just don't think it's fair. I think maybe some people on this show would deserve a Trish attack, if you will. <laughs> but I don't think Natalie deserves that at all. Now, maybe they know more information, or they obviously know more information, but maybe there's information out there that justifies this behavior, but I don't think it's fair at all. It's certainly, I mean, Mike didn't exhibit this kind of attack, and this is consistent with previous things that have happened. So what's going on? I could imagine that for Trish, this was modeled to her growing up, this kind of whatever you want to call it, you know, very self-assured hostility, xenophobia, also abandonment, and something's being displaced onto Natalie. I don't know. Something's going on, but there, we don't know anything about Trish's history to speculate. Michael's just a big teddy bear, and she saw it and took advantage of it. My son was hurt, and that, of course, in turn hurts me. I mean, come on. It's just bad news all the way around. You're entitled to that hurt. You're entitled to empathy. Absolutely. That's healthy. You care about your son and he was hurt. That's all you need to know to conclude that and to go down some weird, meandering, self-assured, weird road in which you're convinced that she was, that Natalie was scamming the whole time. Well, that's, that's not a feeling. That's a conclusion based on very limited information. To feel bad for your son, to be hurt for your son, to maybe even just be angry at Natalie. You don't even know why. He's like, I'm angry at her because it didn't work out and she broke his heart. I don't know who's to blame. I don't know why it happened. I have my ideas maybe, but you know what? I'm just going to stay with the hurt feeling. So I would suspect that there's some reason why she avoids just sitting with the foundation of the experience, which is feeling bad for her son. Do you plan on working on a divorce? I don't know. What do you Uh, mean you don't know? You don't even want to be here. What is it to you, Trish? It's not your business. And Mike, are you going to step in? I mean, does Mike want her? Now I'm starting to think Mike wants her to say these things. Like he, he, maybe Mike is thinking, well, my mom's being a little harsh, but, but, you know, I, I, I want to ask Natalie those things, too, and Natalie deserves to be confronted this way. Now, there's nothing wrong with Trish being like, what's going on with your relationship? Or, you know, Because up until this point, I don't know all the details, but at least I know enough that they're not officially divorced and that during the last tell-all, there was some sort of implication or direct statement that Natalie was avoiding getting divorced while dating other people because she... she Natalie wanted to stay in the States and and didn't want to be deported or something. Now, given the war, you would understand that, I would imagine. You'd think if you were Trish, you would at least provide for that possibility. But that's the other thing, and there's a certain echo chamber where they love Russia and think that the whole thing is some sort of conspiracy and, uh, you know, invading another country and killing innocent people, occupying land, bombing cities, you know, residential areas, hospitals. There's no justification for that at all, obviously, you know, which is what Russia's doing to Ukraine. And uh, anyway, uh, so 
Yeah. I wonder what Mike's thinking. Because another possibility that I think is often happening on the show is that Mike might actually be stepping in, but they're editing it out. Or the producers set up the conversation where they're like, okay, this is going to be Trish now talking to Natalie and Mike. We want you to stay out of it. I don't know if they do that sort of thing, but I could imagine that happening. But I don't know. How do you not know that you that you want a divorce or not? You've been gone for, what, two years? What do you... Why would he want to stay married to you? You don't act like a wife at all. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, I hear you. I mean... A, a and two thumbs up to Natalie. I mean, she's not being combative. She's listening. She's seemingly taking it in. I think kind of. I don't. I, I doubt she's taking it entirely in because I think she knows better than than to just accept Trish's narrative on this whole thing. But if I were in Natalie's shoes, I'd be like, I'm out. <laughs> I'm not going to be treated like shit. So I don't care about a reality TV show. I'm not going to put up with this. Or I would talk back and be like, you don't know what you're talking about. We just had a lovely conversation outside, and you come in here attacking me. Like, I think this is your problem. <laughs> and, Mike, can you help me out here? Did we not just have, you know, I know that you're upset, and I apologize. And I thought that you, you know, what's going on here? Are you going to, are you going to, Defend. You don't have to defend me, but are you going to tell your mom to back the F off? Like, what's going on here? A, a wife usually comes home once in a while, but you don't. You're gone forever. You're just gone. I mean, you're out there dating other men. So why are you not filing for a divorce? That's all I'm asking. I left Michael. I didn't divorce him. And I started a relationship with Josh. And this is bad. I just figured, but maybe it didn't happen, that Natalie had a conversation with Mike saying that she that she breaks up with him even though they haven't officially divorced and that he that she's going to date other people. I just assumed that that conversation happened. Maybe it didn't. Maybe Mike was like, well, she left, but we're not divorced, so we're just temporarily separated and we'll get back together maybe, or we'll get divorced. Either way, I'm sort of in limbo. And then all of a sudden, boom, he hears about her dating other people or something. Like, I, you know, I could, I could actually imagine that happening because a lot of people do stuff like that. So if that's the case, then yeah, yikes. <laughs> you need to decide whether you're gonna be married or not. And if you're gonna be married, then you need to get your ass back here and you need to act like a wife. And if you're not gonna be married, you need to file for divorce. If Mike wants divorce, uh, we divorce. If Michael would like to give me a chance, I would consider coming back. I, I was here waiting and waiting and waiting by myself, you know, and then, like, I find out you're dating. This whole thing is turning out a lot differently than I thought. I, for, I don't know. I just thought that they were going to catch up on things and have a pleasant <laughs> interaction. And maybe there'd be some feelings and then she would go back home and be with Josh and that would be that. But it's just like they're, they're just right back into it. The whole thing is, it's like pause happened and now the conflict is just starting right back up again you're still a married woman and you shouldn't be doing that you know i mean uh let's reverse roles let's say i went and dated a bunch of women you would get jealous just going to dinner when i when i ordered from the waitress from you you know what i mean how would you feel if i went and dated you know five or six different women you destroyed us yeah well, now it's starting to look like Mike might be supportive of what his mom is saying, that that the mom knows that he wants her to say those things, or or it's just a, a little more hostile than where he's at. So, hmm. yeah. I mean, again, I think it there's some, at least from what we've seen on the show, I think there's some validity potentially to it if we knew the full story of how it went down. If she just literally didn't say, by the way, I'm going to date other people or I don't know. But she also could have thought that, well, we broke up. So he's going to date other people. I'm going to, I don't know. It's just hard to know the ethics about it. So I don't know. So I, think, I think there's a lot of sides to this that I don't know the full landscape. I just want Michael and... I to be happy. I'm sorry. <sighs> yeah, <laughs> yeah I, uh, I mean, that's different than what I thought things would happen. And so, yeah, I, 
I suspect that Mike is not fully behind Trish's full spiel. <laughs> so given him doing this, because, you know, that shows that he has empathy, he cares, and wants to comfort her, at least with affection, not with his words, though. <laughs> I mean, looked at it in a certain way, I don't know. Trish just comes in and verbally abuses her and corners her and attacks her unfairly. She's been victimized. And then Mike kind of knows that and sa says, let me comfort you after being abused by my mom. I mean, that's one way to look at it <laughs> because it it was pretty extreme. But I don't know. I How do you see it? How, how do you see it? How do you see it? <laughs> Natalie crying. It's very heart wrenching. It's gut wrenching. It's. No matter what, Michael, he gives me a feeling of security. He always did. Yeah, that's interesting that she can verbalize that and know that about herself. That was my suspicion that Michael, Mike, gives her a feeling of security. She says that. And that's the way it looks, especially in contrast to Josh. That interestingly, Josh uh, handles the situation a, a lot better. He doesn't seem to be triggered. He doesn't seem to get defensive. He is pretty accommodating to Natalie, but Josh has a life. <laughs> I mean, Mike does too, but Josh, Josh has a life that involves a lot of other people, a lot of other women. Uh, he lives in a big city. There's a lot of other opportunities. He he's had a lot of life. He he was married before. He has kids. Josh is connected to a lot of different people. And in contrast, Mike seemingly is a pretty insular, isolated person in the middle of the woods. And even though Natalie probably is pretty hesitant to be with Mike again after all the conflict that they've been through, I think. Given her attachment and security and her relational traumas, security is very important to her. And we can we can use this as, as a jumping off point. Sometimes for us, when we have a lot of insecurity, a lot of attachment security, and a lot of relational traumas, we might be attracted to someone, even in a toxic situation, primarily because of that secure feeling that we get. Because Natalie knows or suspects based on information that she has available to her that in all likelihood Mike will not cheat on her he will not do now it was something that came up while they were together right because Mike spent the night at a friend's house because I think they drank a lot the day before she was she was getting married and it really triggered Natalie but I think for Natalie she's thinking well that's small potatoes compared to the kind of triggers that I will and have already you know, had from Josh. And if you have a pretty limited understanding of the bigger picture, you might just you might just compare A, B, A, B and be like, well, Mike, because I just feel more secure with him. But actually on paper if, or what we see in terms of their relationship, Josh, it's hard to know what's really in Josh's mind because I, I think there's a, good, there's, a poss there's a pretty good possibility that he's like, well, you know, it's fun. I'm on a reality TV show and sh I have a business <laughs> and Natalie is a good person to date and, you know, we'll see how things go. But I, I'm guessing that Josh doesn't have a lot. And why would he? he barely knows her. Uh, I'm guessing that Josh doesn't have a lot of investment in the relationship. And seeming, although he did introduce her to his kids and to his wife, he doesn't do that very often. But I don't know. It's just hard to really... Uh, trust everyone's motivation on a reality TV show, obviously, but but the way that Josh comes across, the way that he handles things, the how accommodating he is, and and how flexible he is. You know, when she was accusing him of some horrific things, accusing Josh of ruining her life because he, you know, if I remember the details right. She was coming to California, and he was like, okay, well, to let you know, like, that'd be great if you came, and I'd love to see it, but that last day that you're there, I actually have to fly out of town for a really important, it's not even just kind of work, it's like this big deal, 
So just know that I'm, I'm going to have to work while you're here to some extent, but also I'm going to have to go. She attacked him as if he was a monster about that, and he just rolled with it. And then I think after that was when he introduced her to his family and to his, to his ex-wife, to his kid. At least from what we've seen on the show, Josh is a, a good match given her reactivity and triggering and attacking and hostility. Because Mike isn't like that. Mike, although he's in that direction, given how generally mellow he is, he can explode, obviously. But I think that he can be that way. But I don't think he's that that flexible and that accommodating. But, you know, maybe Natalie is making a good choice here. Who knows? Maybe she won't even be with Mike. But I didn't show it. She, Natalie is saying... Even though Trish lives here, I want to live with you. I will sacrifice that. And I'm thinking, how about you just move into Squim and date him <laughs> or something? Like, because living in the same house with Trish, I mean, I just can't go well. Porn stuff, the one I gave you? No. All right. Okay, I'm going. I'm sorry. Take care of yourself. Thank you. I hope your mom. Gets here okay. Oh my God, Trisha, pray for it. Okay, let's go. Someday. There are other factors involved in this. Uh, who knows? But I'm guessing some people are saying these things like Natalie's motivation to want to get back with Mike doesn't have to do with her wanting to be with Mike, but has more to do with that she's worried about being deported. She's worrying, worried about... Her mom, she's trying to get her mom out of Ukraine, and Natalie might know or calculate or suspect that if she had a stable relationship and was married to Mike, that she'd have a greater chance with that, at least financially with Mike's job and that kind of thing. So there could be ulterior motives to this. I don't think that that's the case. I think Natalie is a pretty uh, motivated from her heart. I don't think she's necessarily doing things out of calculation often, if anything, to a fault. So I, I would suspect that she was dating Josh and, you know, it had ups and downs and, and she was starting to kind of pull away. Oh, yeah, that's, I remember thinking that, that she became very dependent on Josh and a lot of hopes and dreams. She had that big blow up. And I think she distanced herself a bit. Then they were dating and... They didn't, she didn't have a lot of triggering because I think she didn't want to be close to Josh because she knew how, how bad it could get if she did get close given her reactivity. And then in that time, the war happens, Mike contacts her, and she has a rekindling, if you will. And she's also been trying to date for a while, for a year. She was dating in Florida. Things didn't go well. And she wants that security, and she's just like, well, maybe it wasn't so bad. Maybe I can make it work. You know, you could see someone thinking that. Look, she comes to you. She loves you. Thank you. Safe travels home. I mean, if they get back together... And we have another couple seasons with them together. I mean, what an epic story this couple will have on this show. I mean, there's been a few couples. I mean, how many episodes have I even? 30 plus episodes with just Natalie. And I had 72. Actually, someone emailed me earlier today and said that for the past couple months, they wake up in the morning and... They've been watching every Natalie and Mike episode. And so she said she got up, you know, past 70. And so, yeah, 72 episodes with Mike and Natalie and then another 30, so over 100. I mean, we're getting up there with Darcy in terms of the amount of episodes. I mean, how many episodes did I do with Darcy? <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing this right now. I'm just sort of curious. Darcy was 69. So there's Darcy and then there's Darcy and Stacy. So there's 69 Darcy and Stacy. And then there's like 40 something or 50 something just Darcy herself. So it looks like more with Darcy. Anyway, point is, is if they have another couple seasons and they have their ups and downs, what an epic story this would be. I mean, it's going on for so long, all the ups and downs, the, the marriage, COVID, single life, Trish getting back together. You know, if they really make a go of this, 
Because we have we seen this before where a couple I haven't watched Chantel, but I, I plan on. Do, do they have a similar kind of a story? I guess you could argue that in a mini version, like the, the Corey and Evelyn was a little like this with their breakups and coming back together. But the, the amount of time that I've spent, the amount of time on the show and just how interesting this couple is and and how on the verge and all the the epic scenes that I think are famous, the you know, the you have low IQ, the rat thing, the hooker thing. The, the eyes thing, the aliens thing, <laughs> you know, the ring throwing thing. The, uh, there's just so much there, you know, because I don't know, I, I can't, I don't know these things, but I get a sense that there are certain iconic 90 Day Fiance personalities. I think Natalie and Mike are up there, but I wouldn't have put them in the top five. But if, if they keep going and they have, you know, more ups and downs, I can imagine them entering into that in terms of the culture, like top five interesting couples, or I don't know, word you would say, compelling or watched or hated or <laughs> talked about, or, um, you know, it's just interesting to think about. And from the beginning, I've been pulling for them. I feel like I'm kind of alone in pulling for them. I saw how much chemistry they had that first season, the first couple seasons. And when it started to go downhill, I'm just like, you had so much chemistry, you had so much, and a lot of compatibility too. Like there's a part of their attachment that actually fits well together and hopes and dreams. And they just got off track. And I just thought like, oh, there's just, there's so, I don't know, I guess I'm pulling for them, but if they don't go to therapy, I think it's just gonna, especially if Trish is around, it's gonna be worse than before, but it'll be golden television, meaning, you know, the producers will love it and have it on television and we'll watch it and I'll watch it. So, but I don't know. Maybe you all know what happens. Maybe by the tell all they're broken up. I don't know. I feel loved. She does have regrets, but I'm not going to put myself in a situation where I give her my heart again and she just rips it back out. So I'm. So he's shaking his head. Is that a no, but he doesn't want to say it? Is it a, is it a, I don't know when he's shaking his head? I'm guessing that's what he's saying. If it's a, I don't know, then I'm guessing that he will let her back. <laughs> I don't know. Because I, I think if you, if there's a, if there's a little, if the door is a little ajar, I think the amount of, chemistry that they have. I don't know if chemistry is the best word for it, but I think I'll just call it chemistry connection or their vibe together when things are going well. I think that will, and if he's not with anyone else, I mean, there's a chance that he has a partner and he's getting his needs met through that. But if there aren't those things, then I don't know. I would suspect that his love for her will push the door open, but I don't know. Swim against the tide, won't do it, I'm told. Back in but then Trish is there in his ear telling him that she's an effing B and all these kinds of, she's a scammer. So, you know, that could offset that. He also could be a no, even, and he could just not want to say it. So there's that possibility. In the rain, cause I'm taking home gold tonight. All right, well, that is it for that episode. Everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.